Hi, welcome or welcome back. My name is Anita and I mainly post content about grad school applications. In today's video, I'm excited to host my very first guest. His name is Jude and he's from Ghana and he'll be sharing his grad school application experience. And for today's video, which is the first part, he'll be telling us about what exactly is materials engineering, which is his field of specialization, as well as how he applied to eight grad school programs. Um, hello everyone, I'm Judean Ntikpari. Um, I'm from Tongo in the Upper East region of Ghana. I'm a recent graduate of materials engineering at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Ghana. And I'm currently having my national service as a teaching assistant in the Department of Materials Engineering, KNUS. So you mentioned materials engineering. Maybe you can tell us what it is about and what career path it leads to, maybe what you're planning to do after your national service. So um, I always say that Materials engineering is the best program you could find. <laughs> yes, and we here in KNUST, materials engineering, we call it the core of engineering technology because everything starts and ends with a material. And so materials engineering, basically, it's a combination of mathematics, physics, and chemistry to explore, understand, and control how materials work. So we look at a particular application. So we always start from what function is the material supposed to play? And then we design the material to be able to fit that application based on engineering its structure, how it's, it's molecularly arranged, and also the properties that we want, both physical, chemical, mechanical. So materials is very interdisciplinary. You could go literally anywhere you could work in in the medical sector as as a bio biomaterials engineer you could also work in in research centers as a computational materials engineer you could work i have professors here who also work in like oil and gas because of um, corrosion corrosion is a material phenomenon which can be controlled and but personally i'm interested in wearable and flexible technologies. I think recently we've been hearing that um, Samsung are making, or they have even made already some foldable smartphones. We used to have mm -hmm. foldable, um, what do you call them? In Ghana, we call them YAM phones, right? Those yeah, phones the with the phone. keypads you can press. Yeah. yeah. And now we are going back there with smartphones. And I like the versatility that comes with these materials. And that's what I'm exploring. That sounds so interesting. Okay, so <laughs> maybe you could tell us how, did you know about materials engineering before you did it in uni or how, how did you find yourself doing it? Was, did someone advise you to do it or did you just land there? How did you get there? Uh, that's, that's a big one. And yeah, I'd, I'd say it's a miracle because uh, I didn't know about materials engineering. Growing up, I always wanted to be a pilot. I always wanted to be a pilot. I loved planes and everything about them. But then uh, when I got to high school, I spoke with um, some of my seniors in high school and they were like, uh, based on my eyesight, I went for checkup and I realized I didn't have 100% eyesight. And so you can't be a pilot if you are not 100% uh, you don't have 100% eyesight. And so then I said, if I wouldn't be a pilot, then I'd be the one making the planes, right? Nice. And so I said, I wanted to be an aerospace engineer. And so I got to high school and then my seniors are like, okay, you, there's a combination here. Instead of doing, in Ghana, we do four electives and four core. So your electives are biology, physics, chemistry, elective maths. But instead of doing biology, I did technical drawing or engineering drawing because I knew I wasn't going anywhere medical. I was going engineering. So I did aerospace. Um, I did that with my mind to do aerospace engineering. But then coming out of high school, we wrote the exam. And I thought about it. And I'm like, aerospace engineering is not so robust in Ghana. Even if I want to make planes, in Ghana, we don't make planes. In Africa, yeah. I'm sure there are very few places that they actually make planes. 
And so why don't I do something general like mechanical engineering and then maybe go somewhere where we can make the planes and specialize in aerospace? So that's my idea. But then when the results came, we didn't do the course that I wanted to do. So um, that's what happened. And I said, okay, I would rather change the program. Yeah, in Kenya, they would give you like a two-week window where you can change your program. And so I changed it. I didn't know about materials engineering. I just saw it there and I'm like, okay, with the grade, I could get this. I didn't, know about, I didn't even read about it. I just chose it as my second choice. And when it came, so I actually thought I'd get mechanical engineering. But when it came, I had materials engineering. And I was sad, if you'd say, because... I didn't know what it was. And I'm like, oh, my friends are going to do mechanical engineering and all. So my sister actually went online and we said, and I was like, oh, actually, this is good. Like, they make a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. And I had to read about it. And I'm like, okay, uh, it, it's not bad. Uh, I'll just come and do it. It's engineering. Yes, it's still engineering. And one thing I always tell myself is whatever I'm going to do, I make sure I do it well. Because at the end of the day, it's your name. That's on it. It's not anyone's name. It's your name. And you have to make sure that you live up to it. So that was it. I came in. And as I went through the program, it got interesting. And I learned a lot from it. First year, first semester results came out and I was like the best student in the class. And I was surprised. <laughs> so I was like, okay, maybe this is the place for me. So let me be more serious with it. And now like there's more expectation on you that you have to do better you have to live up and the interest has grown from there um i would say i've been privileged more than most people when i was in second year i was uh, nominated as one out of three students to represent my school Ken UST in south korea uh, osan national institute of science and technology for an exchange program it was six months so i went there wow. and like i got blown away by what materials engineering is doing in south korea because Samsung is in South Korea, and the main thing about Samsung is semiconductor materials, which is a big thing there. So when I went, I even like, studied some of semiconductor engineering and all that. And so they just think that once you're studying that you're actually going to Honda, or you're going to Samsung or something. But in Ghana, we don't see it like that. And that's why I'm also trying to create more awareness of what materials engineering is, so that in the near future, we could based on our own resources, build the materials engineering industry in Ghana. I like that you mentioned that leaving uh, your country and going outside exposed you to the bigger picture and what more you can do with what you're learning that you are not aware of. So maybe you could share with us um, your admission. I know you've got admission to a school. Maybe you could share with us where you're going and what you're going to do. So um, I've got admission to Oxford, University of Oxford, just like you. <laughs> and um, I'll be going to study a PhD. They call it a DPhil in materials. Yeah. I'll be doing flexible photonics and its manufacturing. My goal would be to improve upon um, telecommunications in Africa and going forward, maybe the world. Did you always want to move on to do a DPhil, or what inspired you to apply for a DPhil program? Um, yes, so as I said, like growing up, yeah, you don't know, always know what you want. And so you move on and you grow, you learn. And so while mm -hmm. in my program, like when I went to South Korea, I actually did like three lab, three different labs. and through those labs, I, I realized that materials engineering was mainly about research. We devise the new materials and then give it to whoever is applying it to apply it to their technology. And so I realized that doing a DPhil would actually open me up to learning more about materials, especially in the area that I want, which was in, in wearable and flexible technologies. And so... I decided to apply for DPhil program. Did you maybe apply for different schools and different programs or was it only Oxford? Yeah, so um, actually I applied to, I think I applied to eight schools 
Um, so far, I've had six responses, and I think two are pending. Actually, I wanted to apply to some more, but after I applied to Oxford, I was so drained. I, I wanted to take some time off. <laughs> it, was, it was so hectic. It. it was so hectic. And so um, I applied to the University of Illinois, Banner Champaign, the University of Washington, Michigan State University, Carnegie Mellon. Um, yeah, I think Rice University, Alabama, and then Louisiana State. Oxford was the only UK school I, I applied to. And I really wouldn't oh. have applied to Oxford if it wasn't because of something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I can speak about that. Yeah, okay. So before we get, we get into that, of the eight that you applied to, how many did you get accepted into and how many did you not get into? Yeah, so surprisingly, surprisingly, I always thought I had more rejections than acceptances. So I was just going through it this morning and I'm like, oh, it's actually a break even. So I have three acceptances and three rejections. So um, the first rejection I had was Michigan State University. I think like one, two weeks after I applied and boom, unfortunately, you get end up that, that kind of thing. <laughs> and and yeah. sometimes it's so hard, but I last year I actually applied for a certain program which was in my department. I was, I was still in school when I applied to it because it was an accelerated program and I wasn't admitted. It really shook me. And so now I don't take rejection so like badly. I just, oh, it's happening. So let's move on. Yes. So I was rejected from Carnegie Mellon Rice and Michigan, but I was accepted to Oxford. Oxford came first. Oxford was my first acceptance. And when, once I saw Oxford, I was like, <laughs> forget about the others, right? But then I also got accepted to University of Washington and University of Illinois at Banner Champaign. And I have two others which are pending. That was it for today's video. I will see you in my next video where we continue with Jude's grad school application journey. Bye.